What's going on, everybody? Andrew Thompson here of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. Got a very, very, very special guest joining me on the channel today. Somebody I've been wanting to talk to for a very long time. Pittsburgh native himself, a Tiger style, a man who has had a very successful 2020 coming off of a very successful 2020, and he's going into a very successful 2021. I'm going to predict it. This is Lee Moriarty. Lee, what's going on, Chief? Not much. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this, man. Uh, of course, we're here to promote the GCW Fight Forever 24-hour special. Yes, you heard it. You heard it right, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours, different blocks of shows uh, through through each various points, times of the day, man. Ali, just, just seeing like, um, I, I, I forgot, I'd be remiss not to mention, um, I saw over $14,000, maybe $15,000 raised for the talents on the show, man, and continuously growing. Lee, when you see that type of support uh, from fans, like, what, what does it mean to you to, to have, of course, seeing the, uh, the, the support that you guys have gotten throughout the pandemic and to see how how many people came together and to raise this amount of money for you guys to, uh, to present this show? It means a lot because, you know, with a pandemic, pretty much everyone is either working limited or not working at all when you're a wrestler. Mm. So whenever we have the opportunity to get in the ring, it's rare and we're very grateful for it. So to have people support it, especially because I think this event, there won't be any fans. So it's kind of harder to get money together when you're not selling tickets. Mm. So it's very special. It means a lot to us that we've raised that much money already. And we haven't even like <laughs> started airing live yet. <laughs> Yeah. And, and like I mentioned that you had a, a very successful 2020, like it was a specific stretch uh, towards the end there. And I think, you know, what I'm about to go to the collective weekend. I think you had a six match stretch that uh, that, that weekend, man, just shows back to back and, and you, you did well in every single one of them. Like, was it like coming out of that weekend? Did you have that like sense of and, and not in a cocky way, but more so like, damn, like, yeah, I, I was the man this weekend. <laughs> nah, it was <laughs> more of a... Um... It wasn't a pride thing. I was just like happy that I was able to do something that meant a lot to a lot of people who like independent wrestling was going through a lot, not mm -hmm. even just the pandemic, but everything else that was, that's been going on. So to have that happen, that collective weekend and me to be a part of it and be somewhat of a unintentional focus point, like I didn't intend to be a focus point. I didn't intend to have so many matches. It just happened that way. And for people to see what I could do in six different styles, six different ways, it was really cool. And then it was just a big accomplishment because independent wrestling means a lot to me. So to be able to do that is special. I know not too long after the collective weekend, uh, your match on, uh, with suicide on the Impact Explosion show aired. I know that had to be like a real cool thing to see. Like from that opportunity, did did any other opportunities possibly present themselves as far as like a, a TV opportunity? Uh, you know, from from you know from that Impact appearance, did anything kind of come up from that, or did you notice things started to? Um, well, of course, things started to pick up by the collective weekend, but after that Impact Explosion appearance, did you notice things started to maybe pick up a little bit more as far as a possible uh, TV appearance? Um, I don't know if, I don't think it was connected, but I did have an opportunity with the Ring of Honor mm. that, so I rested the collective Friday and Saturday, and I went back on Sunday, and then on Monday, I went up to the bubble thing, but anybody that was at the collective couldn't compete during that taping uh, of oh exposure, yeah. Oh yeah. so I did have an opportunity, and, you know, so I don't know if that was because of just because I don't think the air impact thing aired. I knew people mm. knew that I was there because Alex Shelley posted that picture with myself, Ben Hardy, and <laughs> Lamar. Mm. But I don't think my match aired at the time. So, but I have noticed I've been getting more traction. I just don't know if it was directly from Impact or if it was an overall thing from Impact, the collective, and just my performances through right. places like Paradigm, other GCW events, and such. And, you know, you mentioned GCW, like you, I think you've been with them or, or like not been with them, but like you've been in the promotion for like about a little over a year now. I think that's that, that's a correct timeline, like maybe a little over a year you've been with uh, like been competing for GCW. Like when, when you see like how I mean, of course, like the combined, um, you know, thing that you guys come together, like you earning your own stripes. And then at the same time, the spotlight that GCW has been able to put on you, like tell me how you compete, you competing in promotion, uh, you think has helped you, you know, grow overall, like grow your exposure. And then, you know, just be able to put more eyes on you combined with what you've been able to do on your own accord. Uh, I think like, it's kind of hard to argue against that like, GCW is the biggest independent promotion in wrestling. Yeah. Like their exposure, their 
toured Japan multiple times. They were, I think, planning to tour the UK. Uh, they have partnerships with companies down in um, Mexico, like I think DTU. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been there less than a year. I debuted in June. It was the first show back after everything shut down, all the shows were canceled. Mm-hmm. And it was really special because I wrestled with Trey Lamar in a singles match. And to debut with GCW in a singles match was like very high pressure because it's like you're not in the ring with five other people. You're in there with one other person. And you're trying to show who you are to a bigger audience. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. And since then, being able to be in the ring with, I guess, their their standards. I wrestled Tony Deppin, Chris mm-hmm. Dickinson, Blake Christian. Those are their guys. They're like the uh, the gatekeepers, I guess. <laughs> so to be able to work with them and continuously be brought back means I'm doing something right mm. and be accepted by the GCW fans and the people in the locker rooms and management. Everything is really cool. And, and just seeing you wrestle over the past six, five, maybe five, six, seven months, like specifically, like seeing you on this stretch that I'm specifically referring to, like I, I always think that it would be cool or I could see you doing something like maybe like later down the line, 10 10 years from now, nine years from now, I could see you like or opening like your own wrestling school or something along those lines. Would that would you ever be interested in like maybe go, going back to Pennsylvania and you know opening up a school there and like kind of bringing up the talent, the local independent talent there? Would that be something that would interest you? Maybe I don't know where I would open a wrestling school, but I do have some sort of interest in training. Mm-hmm. Like I've been asked to be a trainer before at schools. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I have enough experience or knowledge or the confidence to be responsible for training anyone. Yeah, I think like for me personally, I would have to be around at least a decade. Mm-hmm. Obviously anybody, you can pick up knowledge faster or slower depending on who you are. Right. So maybe I have more knowledge than some people in wrestling longer than me. Maybe I have less <laughs> than people or I have yeah, less people who've been only wrestling three years when I've been wrestling five. It's just about timing. Mm-hmm. So when I don't I don't want to be a trainer and then be on the road full time. Let's say right. I get a contract and I'm not there for like half the training sessions. Mm-hmm. It's like, am I really your trainer? Or I'm just a guy that like stops and it helps out. <laughs> so it's one of those things, it's just timing. But I mm-hmm. would like to help out one day with training mm-hmm. people if I could. I think that's a, like a little interesting dynamic that you mentioned right there. Cause even though you are still like you, you're very, I think, I think very young is the word too. Like as far as, um, you know, you going into your wrestling career only five years in five years in or so, like, I, I think that would be like an interesting thing to have somebody who is still like very much, very actively within this, within the scene. And like, you've seen most trainers, like they are still active, but maybe their training thing is like more so of the full-time thing. Opposed to if you have somebody, you know, if hypothetically, if you were in this situation, you would still be actively maybe with some of your trainees. Like, I think that would be something like a, like a real cool, like little scenario right there, man. I think that'd be decent. Yeah, it's definitely possible to do. It's one of those things. If I were to do it, I feel like I would at least want to be their full time trainer when they're right. starting off. Mm. And then as they like, you know, get more comfortable and then it's like I could be away a little bit more. Mm. But it's something I'm always thinking about. Hmm. We'll see down the line if I become a trainer or anything like that. <laughs> yes, and I also noticed uh, through your social media, man, that you're very into like graphic design and video editing and stuff like that. I think that's stuff cool, man. Like, have you, like, what was that something that you kind of discovered about yourself that was like unrelated to wrestling? Or did you kind of notice how interested you were, you know, as you continue to, you know, get experience in the business? Like, was that something that you was just like, you know what? Let, let, let me try to do this on my like on my own and let me try to you know make my own stuff was it kind of one of those things um i was an artist before i was an athlete so mm. i learned i was drawing and everything when i was a kid before i discovered pro wrestling and i stuck with it throughout everything through school through wrestling and all that and wrestling gives me a different outlet and a platform because now i have a reason to create art instead of me just drawing for fun or whatever so if I need a video edited for highlights, I can do that. Ooh, if I need right. a graphic for a shirt like this or something, I can do it. So it gives <laughs> me a reason to be more creative and to think a little bit deeper about my stuff. And I always see my, like, wrestling is sport and art. And I'm kind of like, some people are more an athlete. Some people are more an artist. I'm like right there, even with both of so I try to be. And this year, and especially 
with everything kind of still moving a little bit slower and shutting down, I've been focused more on developing my artistic side outside of the ring. Mm -hmm. So I just try to do that. And like, I have interest in, you know, running an art show one day, completely unrelated to pro wrestling. I have interest in That's you know, cool, man. having my own art gallery, things like that. I'm mm -hmm. inspired by all different types of art, not just wrestling art. So hopefully one day that can happen and we'll see. Well, like, I, I think that's real, that's real cool, man. Like the fact, like, I mean, have you, did you just kind of like see over the past, like, let, let, let's say June to where we are now, have you seen a lot of independent wrestlers start to, start to like really treat themselves like a business opposed to just strictly professional wrestling? Like more so like you see a lot of people getting into Twitch, a lot of people getting in more to the YouTube and the stream and then all these other different devices that they can use, you know, to make themselves money. Have you kind of noticed that within the independent scene? Like a lot of wrestlers are started like, like more so put more of their interests uh, that, that, that they have outside of professional wrestling and like put that out to the forefront? Yeah, definitely, especially with like Twitch and the freedom you have to do so many different things. You can play video games, you could watch TV, watch movies at watch parties. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that happen. I've seen artists, I mean, wrestlers invest in themselves more when it comes to their own merchandise. So like I have had a big cartel store for probably as long as I can remember in terms of my wrestling career. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my way because I've always wanted to have control over what I was designing with like merchandise wise, like I wanted to have control over the specific fabric that I was printing on and things like that. Mm -hmm. And now I see more wrestlers go that route, like pro wrestling tees and all this other stuff is great, but sometimes you want to have a little bit more control, a little bit more hands on. So things like big cartel or Shopify, things like that. Wrestlers have been taking more time to figure that out instead of just getting someone to design a graphic and put it up for them they're investing in their brand because people will come back and buy stuff from me, not just because the design's nice, but because of it's a comfortable shirt or a comfortable hoodie. Mm -hmm. It's a reliable product. So people are investing more on that. It's, there's like five different senses. So it's not just visual, it's also touch. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna remember how this feels and remember me because you're wearing this all the time because it feels good. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that's kind of like more of a, for, for you specifically, has that been like a more fulfilling type of feeling, like knowing that, you know, you're behind the creation of the products that you're putting out there? Like, is it more of a, like, yeah, the, 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 this 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 thing feels right to me opposed to, and, and not saying there's anything wrong with having a, a big cartel or a pro wrestling tea store, those are like perfectly oh. fine outlets, but like, do you think it's kind of a more like just fulfilling thing to know that you're behind the creation of the products that you're putting out there? Yeah, for me, it is because, uh, it's obviously it's more work, but right. <laughs> like the purpose and tease makes everything a lot easier and more convenient and they like their prints are good quality. Mm. But there's something about for me because like I'm the artist. So everything I do is literally from the ground up other than the printing on the fabric itself. So I'll design the thing, I'll do it on my computer, I'll send it to this printing company that's like 10 minutes from my house. I'll discuss things with them, I'll discuss fabrics and products. So I'm like there for pretty much the entire process. So seeing something from the beginning come to life all the way, getting it sent to the customer and seeing them wear it, it's a very fulfilling process compared to, you know, just having someone else design yourself, right. which not everybody's artist. So I have mm -hmm. that privilege. So I can, you know, appreciate stuff like that a lot more. Right. So it's really cool. And I think it's more fulfilling. Like uh, recently, like I've been seeing uh, Myron Reed, I know he's been doing like um, like little highlight packages for fellow wrestlers. And I, I think that's like real cool, man. Like just, ha like just having another outlet, another way to express yourself and another way that can possibly bring you in, uh, bring you in more financially as well, as well as like just improving on the craft. I think that's always, that's always a plus. But like one, one place that I really do actually want to see you wrestle, I do want to see you wrestle in, uh, in, in, on the New Japan Strong shows. Like they, 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 no, cause they've been bringing like a lot of fresh faces in. Like I've been seeing ACH. I mean, well, for, well, ACH isn't a fresh product in New Japan. Like of course they, he's been there before, but I mean like to the New Japan strong usa thing i think that's you know fair to say they, they've been bringing leo rush in and they blake christian has been on the show before like they've been bringing like a bunch of new faces in. and i what, what i think they're doing specifically i think they're 
scouting talent for scout scouting foreign talent to bring back into the country whenever they are you know allowed to have that like would that be something that would pique the interest of, of Lee Moriarty is to uh, possibly be on New Japan Strong and then maybe making that transition over to Japan because the, the obvious connection is there of course yeah Japan wrestling in Japan is my dream it's mm. not even necessarily signing a contract living in Japan it's just having that one match there's so many professional wrestlers that are so great and they've had that same goal that they've never reached it. And it's because it's really hard unless you're paying your own way or something. It's not as easy to get to Japan because there's so much talent over there. It's, and nowadays in American wrestling, we're influenced by Japanese wrestling, Japanese inf yeah. wrestling is influenced by us. So it's all this big melting pot and it's like, what's going to make you stand out. So I'm always trying to think of that because I want to get to Japan. I just want to have that one match. <laughs> so of course I'm interested in working with new Japan strong if the opportunity were to come up because mm -hmm. I love Japan pro wrestling. You know, I grew up watching that. I think the big transition that made me a hardcore wrestling fan was discovering uh, the best of the super juniors tournaments. Mm. I was like right out of high school or right at the end of my senior year. So mm. it's definitely an influence on me. Like, I, I think one of the things that like, and this is just me assuming, I think one of the things that really may pique your interest as far as like going over to Japan and wrestling in any place, not just specifically New Japan, pro wrestling specifically could be anywhere, but I think it's like just that clash of styles maybe, or maybe like you working with somebody that you just haven't worked before that maybe have a complete, completely different outlook on wrestling than you have. And I think that, 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 that clash and that challenge right there, I think that's something that'll be always interesting. Is that something that like kind of also piques your interest as far as just like going there and mixing it up with somebody and may maybe the communication barrier might not be on par on point, but more so of you just knowing how to feel somebody out and being able to, you know, communicate your body language and uh, with all those other nuances within the ring. It's definitely interesting to me to learn different styles and philosophies in wrestling. Mm. That's why I, like Tiger style is a thing because I had no way of explaining <laughs> who I was or my style of wrestling. I was talking to my younger brother the other day. He's 24. Mm. And he was telling me like, there's not, because um, I've been compared to Brian Danielson, which I don't see mm. it. It's happened a few times, especially <laughs> the past year. And my brother is saying like, he doesn't really see it either. Like he can kind of see it when I'm wrestling certain people, but uh, my style is too broad because I mix it up a lot so mm. wrestling someone in japan that would have these different ways of doing things would help me learn more techniques and uh i'm not necessarily worried about the language barrier because my second match ever was against somebody from japan who was on excursion over here in america mm. and uh it wasn't really a challenge because i like wrestling is universal yeah there's certain differences so if i do an arm drag over here in mexico an arm drag is called a suplex there's things like that mm. But in terms of the body language, most stuff is pretty universal. There's going to be nuances. Like I noticed a difference the way he did a body slam compared to the way we would do him over here. Mm. That stuff does interest me in learning, but the barrier doesn't worry me. Right. I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned Leo Rush earlier. Uh, he he said that uh, back in October, I think it was, he had put out like a list of people that he wanted to wrestle, and I know you were on that list. Um, we, we got the uh, the GCW for the culture block coming up. Of course, I saw uh, Calvin Tankman and uh, PB Smooth announced. Uh, Lee, you want to break some news on the, uh, on, on, the, on the show today, my brother, about you and uh, Leo Rush, maybe possibly uh, mix, mixing it up at uh, for the culture? Huh, we are. I don't know. I didn't know about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just like making a joke, like if you were to like uh break some news oh. on the show. That's what I meant. I, I, oh, I no, no, no I, I ain't meant like I knew something. I just did like because <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I was looking. I was like, I saw your face. You was like, we hold on, we we wrestling at the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know he's facing blank blank at the Wednesday change show, so I wasn't sure. I was like, uh, yeah, I have no idea who I'm facing yet. At the mm -hmm. for the culture block. Mm. Um, I'm excited for whoever it is because I know it'll be great mm. and I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I have absolutely no news to break because I don't know. If it, <laughs> I know speculations of who it could be, but right. not the kind of stone that I would want to say anything, get people's hopes up and all that. That's, I, I'm glad you caught the joke. I mean, I'm glad you like eventually caught up to the joke because I was yeah. like, I, I saw your face at first. I was like, oh, shit. He <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, I was like, now nah, I'm here looking like a fool, thinking I know something. But yeah, man, like, uh, so you got going back to um, 
you know, when you talk about how, how much you're invested in art and, you know, your aspirations outside of professional wrestling, like, let's say maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, like, what would be something other than pro wrestling? Like, you mentioned the art gallery and stuff, like, would you ever consider, like, trying to, like, venture off, like, and not, not, not necessarily put wrestling to the side, but more so specifically focus on, you know, your passion other than professional wrestling and then maybe come back to it later down the line? I don't think I would put wrestling to the side. Mm. I think there's a way of always balancing things. It's fine. It's just figuring out how to do it. Mm. Uh, like Chris Bay or Myron Reed, they're wrestling, but they're also consistently putting out music. Right. So right. I think it's very possible that I could be an artist the way I want to be and be a professional wrestler. Mm. And also 15 years, I don't even know if I'll be wrestling, not because like a lack of interest, but just because maybe you know i want to move more into the production side of professional wrestling mm. i have an interest in that that's one of the reasons i learned the video editing it wasn't just for myself it's to offer a different mm. visual and aesthetic to professional wrestling that might not be there mm. like i'm different than the people that are producing video packages now on mainstream television mm. And then I was, uh, you know, you mentioned production, like I'm, I'm very into that as well. Like I was watching the, um, the Wrestle Kingdom show and I really liked the, um, this, the, this specific shot that New Japan does. And I've always, I've seen them do it before, but it like mm -hmm. kind of stuck out to me when, uh, when, when Kota Ibushi faced Naito in, uh, in, the, in the night one main event, like they always do this like kind of fade out shot, like where, like you see one wrestler, right. yeah, you, you, you know what I'm talking like when you see yeah, one wrestler and it's like, they kind of like, like, I, I don't like, okay, so they, they're, their image is kind of faded. But they had Kota Ibushi walking down. His image was like clear as day, right? So it made it seem like Naito was like looking at him from a, like like a like like an angel on the shoulder type thing, like looking at him. And it it, it was cool as hell. Like I was like all, all over Twitter tweeting about it. I was like, bro, New Japan is like top top five with the <laughs> with, with, with the production team. So I was like, so that that stuff piques you as well. Like you know, just getting into the production stuff and like very like, w would you be interested in? Any any department of that, like anywhere, or would there is there something specific that you would want to keen in on the terms of production? Pretty much, I think it would be anything. Mm. I really like camera work, yeah. so agenting and getting with um, like the wrestlers, figuring out like when certain things are going to happen, so I know the shots to get, like how they do that. Mm. So there was a time, what was it? Ibushi, I think it was, did the uh, Ron of the Osprey. He lands on the oh speed my, and, the load, and how it transitions. I really like stuff like that. <laughs> like how you were saying the uh, the fade. They do yeah. that a lot. They have the wrestler and it'll fade out and you see mm. the audience and it'll fade. Mm. Or they'll do the zooms. So maybe someone kicks out and it's a dramatic moment. They zoom in close to the wrestler's face. And mm. I've noticed on uh, AEW, uh, they started doing that. I don't know how long they've been doing it, but I noticed on dark they zoomed in they do that little effect so it's cool seeing these different things pick up on pro wrestling so it's not just hard camera roaming right. camera trying to like actually do stuff where how now wwe has that really high def thing for their entrances that the nfl was using mm. so it's cool oh yeah things. yeah dude those ak cameras i think that's what they call ak cam those are like crazy like i <laughs> like I'm, I'm i can only imagine how much trouble somebody could get in if they drop one of them things. Well, I, I know you're getting fired off the rip. I'm That's but, why I wouldn't want to hold a camera. I was like, <laughs> point direction, I'm not trying to hold one. But uh, like go, going back into that, man, like I was thinking about like specific, when you were talking, I was thinking about like specific pro wrestling shots that like kind of make me like, what, what I get like really excited about it. Like um, like one thing that I really enjoyed, um, you know, mentioning um, the, the late John Huber, uh, who passed away everybody knows Brody Lee like one mm -hmm. thing that AEW did that I really liked about his entrance was like they would do like the wraparound shot from the tunnel like the yeah. camera like the camera dude you know those cameras like when you can like in into like the movie trailer like they would yeah. uh they would come around from the from the tunnel and they would like zoom in before he walked out and he was like six four six five so it looked like when you zoom in and then you just see this monster of a man like coming out the coming out the uh coming out the tunnel it just looks it, it looks yeah. cool and then um, thinking about like that uh, that one shot uh, back, it was a it was a match. I think it was between uh, Bret Hart and Sean Waltman. I think I think it was Sean Waltman and Sean Waltman gave him the arm drag, and then the cameraman kind of like cut underneath the um underneath the bottom ring rope, and he zoomed in on Bret, and Bret kind of made this face like I know this motherfucker ain't just do that to me. Like it it was like, <laughs> and, and even like um 
what was that? Uh, that shot that that he got of Vince McMahon when, uh, at WrestleMania when when he came up from underneath the ring and he had the um the steel pipe and he looked crazy, like the blood all over his face. Like the I'm telling you, like that stuff in pro wrestling, like so like so, and, and of course I love the wrestling stuff. Of course I love I love watching professional wrestling, but like sometimes the camera stuff and the production work, that stuff kind of makes me. It, sometimes it does get me more excited than what I will see in the ring. I don't know if that's just me or like, but sometimes that stuff really does like really, really get me into it uh, opposed to when I'm seeing a ring, even though if the in-ring stuff is great. Yeah, I think it adds to it a lot. And there's, they're always experimenting. I would notice when I would watch uh, Progress Wrestling when I first discovered yeah. it, they would primarily use a roaming camera, not a hard camera compared to like a lot of wrestling on TV. You would see a hard camera and then cut to roaming cameras and stuff to get the face shots. Mm. Or um, if you watch Defy or Riptide Wrestling, Ooh, they have a very yes. cinematic shot. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really cool. The the the, the, the uh, Defy and Progress, I mean, the, the Defy and Riptide, they they let this stuff is like real smoky and like real like it's like very like aesthetically pleasing like to watch their show. Like oh, li- 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 we we could talk about this all day, bro. <laughs> we we could talk about this all day. But like I did want to mention uh like th- those uh string of matches that you I think it was two separate matches that you had with uh Alex Shelley and AIW. Uh I think the first one was in like the fall and then you guys had a rematch in um in December of 2019, I think it was. Do do you think that match kind of not not necessarily I don't want to I don't like using the term put somebody on the map because I think that's you know it could be a multitude of things but do you think that kind of maybe springboard you a little bit or it's like a little bit of a trampoline to you know up your stock and you know going to the next thing do you think you think that's kind of a fair assessment to make no they they put me on the map okay so, okay like, yeah, you said it there you go <laughs> yeah. uh there's always see there's going to be a progression there's going to be like milestones you hit that progress you mm-hmm. And uh, with AIW, there was a lot of that. There was milestones. So the first time John Thorne ever saw me was he heard about me from other wrestlers like Derek Dillinger and stuff like that. But uh, the first time he saw me was at an Ultimo Dragon seminar. Ultimo Dragon thought I was okay. So they in February the following year, they did a trial thing I got on that show. And in the process, I just like trying to produce a good match every time and be consistent and then getting the opportunity against Alex Shelley at their 200th event in November. That was our first match and that was more of a feeling out process. And then December, we got a rematch, which wasn't the plan, but they liked the first match so much, so much did it again. Mm. And that match was more of a fight. And then we had our third match in February of last year. And that one was live on IWTV. That was AIW's first time being live on IWTV and having that submission match, this high pressure situation live. And, you know, people streaming it, live tweeting, all this stuff. So wrestling someone who's been, and this was, I think, a few weeks after he had appeared on NXT with Kushida in the tag tournament. Oh, oh yeah. So, yeah, so if you didn't know who Alex Shelley was, which you should have, <laughs> you definitely knew then. So then you see his name and then you see a match graphic with me. Like, I'm 100% where I am mm-hmm. right now because of my trainers, because of the bookers and promoters, because of fans, and because of Alex Shelley, like, taking me under his wing after that match and like, I'm very appreciative of it but that was the match I think put me on the map and then since then I've just tried to be consistent yeah now that's cool as hell man it, it seems like Alex Shelley is just one of those guys that just wants to see the next generation of professional wrestling just taken care of and he's like not one of those because I mean and I, I, matter of fact I think that kind of old guard has kind of moved out just a little bit I may maybe there are still a few in there but I think mostly this that maybe that early 2000s generation of wrestlers like they're really happy with just passing on the knowledge and just seeing the people of today the newcomers of today like really taking the reins and just you know t- taking it from there so i think that's real cool alex shelley but before we wrap it up lee gotta ask you man one one, one match that i did uh watch last night when i was doing some little little bit of interview prep man i watched this match uh with you and ace austin from uh i think it was sam Wu's promotion uh wxwc4 and it was like five years ago four years ago maybe like like how, like how cool is it man to you know and, and of course i know you've been on uh, shows with ace um since over the years of course and like but how cool is it that you know you get to wrestle a guy and you know years later down the line you both are progressing you both end up meeting up at the same shows and like and then i know professional that happens very often in professional wrestling and not even with just you and ace Austin. i'm probably sure there's a couple of guys a number of guys uh that you have worked with early on in your career that have you know you you go you all that came up together how, how cool is that within professional wrestling to see that see those type of things happen it happen uh on a frequent basis as they do 
it's crazy cool. Especially like Ace Austin was my first opponent outside of my home promotion. So wrestling up at okay. Duh, I think it was like whatever his promotion's called. That was my first time wrestling, like driving longer than ten minutes to get to the place I was wrestling because I lived really close to my own promotion. Mm. So wrestling him there, and then we wrestled again a few years later in Cleveland, and then just seeing him continuously progress. You know, he's freaking Jack now. Yeah, he's like the ace, no pun intended, of the <laughs> X division. He's one of the best wrestlers right now in terms of like creativity and artistry. Hi. Mm. So it's really cool seeing people grow and seeing where they were to where they are now. It's mm. the same with Myron Reed, seeing how, because we had wrestled in the same place, me and Ace wrestled the second time, PCW in Cleveland, and see how, how much he's grown, being MLW middleweight champion, things like that music you know being a family man and watch him not just grow as a wrestler but as a person it's really cool yeah nah, man. certainly speaking on Marvin, Marvin, a cool dude man i had the chance to uh interview him i think about three times now and i first interviewed him back in uh late 2019 and then you know things have gone on from there so it's been cool to kind of see that you know that progression for him as well you know what i'm saying it's, it's, it's always cool seeing people just you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just, just go up, man. Like, yeah, so that, that's real cool, Lee. But um, uh, please, for any, any social media that you got to plug, uh, YouTube, uh, upcoming matches, please, the floor is yours. We'll make sure to uh, plug everything uh, in the description uh, in this video. Um, Instagram and Twitter is Apex of Combat. YouTube, just Lee Moriarty. Mm. And uh, my, next up to, my next upcoming matches will be January 29th at the For the Culture Block. GCW's Fight Forever event, which mm. will be streaming for free on YouTube. So you can watch the entire event if you can stay up 24 hours. <laughs> and uh, the next day on the 30th, I'll be competing with OWA in Columbus, Ohio against O'Shea Edwards. Mm. I'm looking forward to both of those. I, I, I've seen that match card, man. I, I'm, I'm liking what they're doing. I see a lot, like, I see a lot of black talent announced for that show. I think that's cool as hell. Like that that card, that card is stacked up, man. They 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 they, they think with that for sure. But but ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Andrew Thompson, another Andrew Thompson interviews YouTube channel. Uh, this is the one and only Lee Moriarty, Mr. Tiger style himself. Uh, and we are out. Peace. Peace.